tune in for this month's Message in the Middle as we flash back to some of our favorite messages. Join Pastor Turner every Wednesday this month at 12 noon. Spread the word and tune in on Facebook Live, YouTube, and IGTV to be blessed by these flashback moments. Attention Boulevard youth and parents, the Nexus and Evolve Ministries are having an event for young people 12 through 17, and you do not want to miss it. Join us Saturday, August 28th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on the South Wind Campus Lawn. There will be tons of activities for the youth, including music, food, games, and a raffle. This is also a great opportunity for youth and their parents to meet our staff and volunteers. Click the link in your weekly e-news to register. We look forward to seeing you there. Tune in on Sundays for our virtual worship experience emanating from our Midtown Sanctuary. The Boulevard is the place to be for soul-stirring worship and a timely word from God. We're on Facebook and YouTube at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday services will be rebroadcast at 6 p.m. August is National Immunization Awareness Month. This annual observance highlights the importance of getting recommended vaccines throughout your life. This month's health tip is focused on the importance of immunizations. You are encouraged to talk to your doctor, nurse, or other healthcare professionals to ensure that you, your child, and family are up to date on recommended vaccines. Also, Boulevard family, with the recent spike in COVID-19 Delta variant cases, now is a great time to do your research and consider your options for the vaccine. Currently, there is a COVID-19 vaccination campaign underway in the United States. The goal is for 70% of all adults in the U.S. to receive at least one COVID-19 vaccine shot, along with steps to vaccinate teenagers and more inaccessible populations. Let's make sure we are wearing our mask and practicing social distancing. Don't forget, ask your doctor if you have any questions about any immunizations. Calling all Boulevard couples, we want to celebrate you. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, let us know by submitting your name, anniversary, and the amount of years you're celebrating on our website at theboulevard.org backslash anniversaries. We'll honor you during our online worship experience on the fourth Sunday of each month. Calling our kids kindergarten through fifth grade. Disciple Town is where you want to be. Sunday virtual worship begins at 12 noon. Click the link in E! News to join us as we learn about Christ in the Bible. And get ready to explore. Join Miss Monica for Disciple Town Discovery, a place to try new things. We're learning more about God and ourselves through movement, the arts in cooking. Look out for more information via e-news and at theboulevard.org. Middle schoolers, there's a new place for you to grow. Join Miss Ty each Sunday at 12 noon on Zoom for Evolve, a place to learn and grow. Check e-news for the link to and email Miss Ty for more information. High schoolers, the Nexus Pod Place of Discipleship is on IG Live every Sunday at noon. If you're a middle, high school, or college age student, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Nexus Boulevard Youth so you don't miss a thing. If you're ages 18 to 25, Cram Ministry is for you. Cram, change requires alternative measures. It's a Boulevard's college age ministry that seeks to assist post-secondary students in making a healthy transition into young adulthood. Don't miss our Zoom sessions every Friday night at 6 p.m. Email Minister Chris Watson for more information at watson.christopher at theboulevard.org. The Boulevard continues to be a blessing to others, whether it's feeding the hungry, showing love to essential workers, or any of a number of community efforts. We couldn't do it without your generosity. Your giving makes the difference. There are multiple ways to give. Text Boulevard Midtown to 77977. You can cash app at dollar sign Mississippi Boulevard. We're also on PayPal or you can give by mail. Remember to use hashtag Boulevard Connect to share your watch party, virtual life group, or social media posts about how much you enjoyed our most recent service. To make sure you never miss what's happening at the Boulevard, 
follow us on social media, and sign up for our weekly e-news by emailing info at theboulevard.org. As members of the Christian Church, we confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and proclaim Him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's name and by His grace, we accept our mission of witness and service to all people. We rejoice in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in the covenant of love, which binds us to God and one another. Through baptism into Christ, we enter into newness of life and are made one with the whole people of God. In communion with the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship and in obedience to Christ. At the table of the Lord, we celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessings, glory, and honor be to God forever. Amen. Boulevard family, grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We give God thanks and praise for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The past 17 months have been unimaginable and disconcerting. So much of our lives have been altered and I wanted to take a few moments to share with you the impact of our church over this season and to give you some important updates concerning our church and its ministry. I cannot say enough about the faithfulness of God to our church and your commitment to generosity that is having a positive impact on our community. Although we have not gathered indoors for corporate worship, the church has not been closed. We have continued to serve the needs of this community, and I thank God for the amazing work of our staff that have continued to work throughout this pandemic to serve you in our community. From our ministerial team to our culinary staff, the awesome job of our music staff to lead us in worship each and every week, to our phenomenal media team that has taken our production quality to the next level. Also allow me to give a major shout out to the operations team that has kept our buildings pristine and clean as well as sanitized. They've also assisted a number of contractors in conducting building upgrades so that when we return to our campuses, we return to refreshed worship and ministry spaces. But what makes our church work is not just our staff, but all of you who make up our church. Thank you to every elder, deacon, minister, and any other layperson who has served in our congregational care ministry that has called text and emailed you throughout this pandemic just to let you know that we as a church have you on our minds and hearts. Thank you so much to each and every leader for your labor of love and the sacrifices you have made. If you don't mind, let me share with you some of the amazing things we've been able to do in the first seven months of 2021. Because of God's faithfulness and your generosity, we have been able to continue the work of MANA Outreach. And through the month of July, we have distributed just shy of 160,000 meals across the city of Memphis and Shelby County. Thank you to all of the MANA Outreach volunteers who have ensured this ministry still happens. Through our partnership with Methodist Labonner Healthcare, we were able to administer 4,750 vaccinations at our Midtown campus. Just a few weeks ago, we distributed 1,200 backpacks with school supplies to Memphis Shelby County students as they return back to school. Let's not forget the 120,000 we raised and distributed to community and global missions organizations to include the Memphis Child Advocacy Center, Room in the Inn, Vance Avenue Youth Development, and the Family Safety Center, just to name a few. I would be remiss if I didn't take the time to mention how our culinary team has even turned their focus to serve in our community. Each and every month, they provide meals to seniors who are residents of Post and Housing in Memphis Towers. 
Also, once a month, sandwiches are prepared for the homeless in downtown and midtown Memphis. Please be under no illusion. The boulevard is loving without limits. And we give God all of the glory. In the coming weeks, we will announce an ambitious outreach initiative that we need the entire church to come alongside as we continue serving the city. I know many of you are wondering and have asked the question, when are we returning to in-person worship? Well, all of our leaders know that at the end of the spring, I shared with them that our target date for returning to in-person worship was September 19th. But that was based on conditions being as such for us to safely return to worship. At the time I shared this plan with our leaders, the number of COVID cases and hospitalizations was steadily declining. Unfortunately, that is not the case today. With the emergence of the Delta variant, according to data reported to the CDC for Shelby County, our rate of infection is at 17.1%. And to place that in the context, any time this rate is above 10%, we're in trouble. In addition, hospitalizations are up 32%. Many healthcare providers are sharing how emergency rooms are overrun. Hospital staffs are overwhelmed. They are desperately in need of more staff. When we look nationally at our seven day average of new cases, it is up to 116,000 new cases per day. This reflects that we have backtracked the progress we have made against this virus. So in consultation with our senior leadership team and our COVID-19 positive response team, we have made the decision in the interest of your health and the safety of our congregants to delay our return to in-person worship. We will continue to monitor this situation and every 30 days we will give the church an update as to where we are. Now I know there are some who are pointing to the reality that there are other churches that are open. However, Mississippi Boulevard is not any other church. We set the standard and we know God has called us to be eagles. And because we're eagles, there are times as eagles we have to fly alone. I do think it is important at this juncture that we continue to lead our community in doing the right things for the common good. I know you are weary of this pandemic, but we cannot become weary in doing what is good and right. I want to challenge us to continue masking up, keep washing your hands and using hand sanitizer, practice physical distancing. If you are unvaccinated and refuse to be vaccinated, I want to strongly encourage you to reconsider. It's time that we put politics and misinformation aside and make fact based decisions. I want you to save the date for Saturday, August 28th, as we partner with the state of Tennessee for a testing and vaccine clinic at our Midtown campus. We want you to be informed of your status and want you to know that vaccines are available if you desire them. There is some good news. Although we will not regather indoors for in-person worship on September 19th, we will gather for an outdoor worship experience, which we're calling our family reunion. More details are forthcoming, but to keep us as safe as possible, we'll not only be outside, but we will require participants to maintain six feet of physical distancing and to keep your mask on at all times. Save that date, September 19th, pull out your favorite Boulevard t-shirt and get ready to praise the Lord at our family reunion as we're led into worship by gospel recording artist Kathy Taylor. Even as we share this opportunity to safely gather, I share it with an asterisk beside it. Because if at any time we find out and deem it is unsafe for us to gather, we're gonna make alterations to our plans. I hope you understand my heart 
and the heart of our church leadership. We love you and want the best for you. I want you to know my wife Bridget and our children pray for you daily. And I'm going to ask of you three things. Stay prayerful, stay patient, and stay positive. Matter of fact, put it in the comment section. Stay prayerful, stay patient, and stay positive. If we do these things, God will bring us out better than how we entered into this season. Church, may God bless you and may God keep you. Let's continue leading, learning, living, and loving without limits. Well, come on, clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice. We ought to be glad in it. Boulevard family, welcome to our time of online worship. We are so glad that you have logged on this morning to share in this online worship experience. And I call you to worship wherever you are today, whether it is in your home, in the dining room, the living room, even in the bedroom, let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I would that you would invite others to join into this time of worship with our church that continues to lead, learn, live, and love without limits. If you're watching from Facebook, I want you to like and share our stream on your page. Let others know in your network that the Boulevard is in worship. If you know there's somebody who needs to be encouraged or reminded that worship is happening right now, go ahead, type their name, tag them in the comment section to let them know that worship is happening right now. And if you're watching via YouTube, I want you to click that bell, become a subscriber so that you get notifications every time we're uploading new content to the Boulevard's YouTube channel. We are blessed whenever there's anyone who doesn't live in Memphis and Shelby County who logs on to our worship experience. And so if you don't live in Memphis or Shelby County, we would love to know where you're streaming from on today. So be so kind to enter your city into the comment section and Boulevard members, won't you welcome them as they share their location on this day? Well, as we prepare to go into worship on today, we want to ask God's presence to meet us wherever we are. So let's pray today. Eternal and gracious God, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you that you've granted us another Lord's Day to worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, O oh Lord God, for every man, woman, boy, and girl who is taking part in this worship experience. And as we come into your presence, we pray that you would forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, fill us with your spirit so that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. God, I pray that you would do what you would have done, that you, O oh God, would speak in a way that we can clearly hear your voice on this day. Cancel out every distraction that would hinder us from receiving all that you would have for us to receive. And God, I pray that you would be glorified as we sing your praises, as we worship you even in our homes, as we even celebrate at the Lord's table and help us to exalt the name of Jesus Christ and we pray today for lives to be changed and transformed. We pray for decisions of people who are going to put their faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ. And God, we are even praying now that you're going to unite someone with our church with this movement of wholeness in this fragmented world. God, we come asking these things in the strong and matchless name that is above every name, the name of Jesus and all of God's people said, amen. We're going into worship right now. Praise the Lord Boulevard. Psalms 92 and 4 says, You, O Lord, have made me glad, and I will rejoice by the hands of your work. Amen. So many people are going through. Your burdens get so heavy that you don't know what to do. I've been sent on assignment to encourage you. You can't give up now, cause you got too much to do. The enemy, he wants you to quit. He wants you to throw in the towel now. Oh, but I've been sent to remind you 
and sisters, let's prepare ourselves to celebrate the saving acts and the presence of Jesus Christ at the Lord's table. The beauty of this moment and the omnipresence of God is that God can meet us wherever we are. It is in the Christian disciples of Christ that we know that Christ is the host of the table. And I pray that you'll invite Jesus to be the host of the table as we prepare to remember how he laid down his life and shed his blood to save us, to redeem us, to restore us, to right relationship with God and to give us the hope of eternal life and glory. And so as you prepare your table in your own home, let's all prepare our hearts as we go to God in prayer. God, we thank you that it was at the cross where we first saw the light and the burdens of our heart rolled away. We thank you for Jesus Christ, 
for salvation and for the joy of our salvation. Thank you for the privilege of worship and of your presence in our homes and wherever we partake of on this day. We ask of you now to bless the table. and Bless us as we prepare to partake of the bread and the cup that we might remember the suffering, agony, and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And as we give thanks in these moments, may we renew our commitment to share the good news of Jesus Christ from where we are, even until the ends of the earth. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. On that night that Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples, he gave it new meaning when he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, take, eat. This is my body, which is for you. Let us all eat of the bread together. same night after the same manner Jesus took the cup and after he had supped he gave it to his disciples and he said unto them that this cup is the new covenant in my blood drink all of it in remembrance of me let us drink the cup together brothers and sisters let us continue to proclaim that Christ has died Christ has risen and that Christ will come again and the people of God said amen well brothers and sisters Jesus Christ gives us the example of self giving love and so it's time that we worship God through our own giving as we honor the Word of God and we give on this day as we're giving of what the Lord has blessed us with. We give for three reasons. We give because we honor the word of God. It is a command of God for us to give in these ways. We give also out of an act of worship. It is a way for us to acknowledge how good the Lord has been to us, how God has taken care of us and provided for us. And then we give as well out of an act of faith and trust. But as we give today, we trust that God is going to meet every need in our lives. God, in fact, knows those needs even before we ask. And so we give trusting God. That God's going to make the difference in our lives and that what we give is going to make the difference in someone else's life. You've already heard earlier in this worship experience the myriad of things that Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church is doing in the life of this community to express the love of Jesus Christ and I would that you would partner with God's purposes as we live them out through the life of our church for such a time as this I want to briefly pray and then I'm going to give you directions as to how you can give electronically and by mail on today let us pray God we acknowledge that every good and every perfect gift comes from you all that we have you have granted unto us and we come now to honor your word to worship you and to demonstrate our faith and trust in you to supply our needs according to your riches and glory and as we give today we pray that what we give collectively might be used to manifest your kingdom here on earth as it already is in heaven help us to express the love you have for the world as we seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Thank you for what you've blessed us with and what we're going to give in these moments and how you will continue to take care of us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. 
Come on, let's go ahead and give, brothers and sisters. We can give in a number of ways electronically. You can give through Push Pay, through PayPal. You can give through Cash App. Be sure to include your first and last name as well as your address so that we can properly record your gift. And then we can give as well via mail. Mail in your tithes and offerings to Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church Disciples of Christ, located at 70 North Bellevue Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. Go ahead. Let's give in these moments. Our worship team is coming to take us higher in worship.
we thank God for being the lifter of our heads. It is in the vernacular of our foreparents who would say that God can lift up a bowed down head and give ease to a troubled mind. And so we come to the word of God in these moments and the word can surely lift us up as we continue this series, Begin Again. I invite your attention to the second chapter of Nehemiah. In your quiet moments, read the totality of chapter two, but due to the length of time and the limitations on the uh, length of the passage and limitations on our time, I wanna invite your attention to verses 11 through 18. When I read them in your hearing, and here is what we find. So I went to Jerusalem and was there three days. Then I rose in the night and I and a few men were with me. And I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. There was no animal with me, but the one on which I rode. I went out by night by the valley gate to the dragon spring and to the dung gate. And I inspected the walls of Jerusalem that were broken down and its gates that had been destroyed by fire. Then I went on to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the valley and inspected the wall, and I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned. And the officials didn't know where I'd gone or what, what, what I was doing, and I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, and the rest who were to do the work. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer derision. And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. I want to put a tag on this text for the next few moments and hours to share. I want to talk from this thought, you cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. The last time we encountered this narrative captured in the memoir of Nehemiah, he has just received word from his brother of the conditions back home in the capital of their homeland, Jerusalem. Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 3 says the remnant there in the province who had suffered the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. Obviously, this news perplexed Nehemiah to the point that he allowed it to drive him to his knees. He's driven to his knees not in desperation, but in devotion and in prayer. When he finishes praying and chapter one comes to a close in identifying himself as cupbearer to the king, it also is sharing the issue that lies before him. Nehemiah has a burden to return home to help the people back home begin again by rebuilding the walls of their city, thus securing their protection and some sense of normalcy, however, he knows it has been the policy of the Persian administration not to allow that kind of building project to take place. So Nehemiah has a sense of fear and trepidation as he broaches this subject with the king, knowing that at best, he will simply be told no, and at worst, he may lose his life or his position of influence. Nevertheless, because Nehemiah has talked to the king of kings, he has confidence in talking with this earthly king because as Proverbs 21 and 1 teaches us, the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. Maybe this is a reminder to all of us that before we appeal to those who are in position, we need to talk to the one who has power. 
Don't get so caught up in what you perceive human beings might do. Sometimes you have to escalate the situation and talk to God about it. And when you talk to God about it, God will either change people or God will change people. <laughs> Y'all to get that on the way home or by the end of the day, God can change people or change people. And obviously in this situation, God changes the mind of the Persian king. And here is what Nehemiah says of the king's response to his request to take a leave of absence and to have resources necessary to rebuild the walls. And the king granted me what I asked for, for the good hand of God was upon me. Nehemiah makes the 1500 mile trek from Susa to Jerusalem and upon arrival, verse 11 of Nehemiah 2 discloses, so I went to Jerusalem and was there three days. Biblical commentators have taken great interpretive liberties to be quite creative with suggesting what Nehemiah was doing and why he was in Jerusalem three days after his journey from Susa. One commentator posits that Nehemiah was laying low in the city so as not to alarm those in positions of authority. Another said that Nehemiah was meeting privately with the movers and shakers in the Jewish community. In my own estimation, one does not have to speculate what Nehemiah was doing those three days. He has just completed a 1,500 mile trip. He didn't have a bullet train, a plane, or even a hummer to make the journey through the arid and hot climate in the ancient Near East. So one can obviously conclude that Nehemiah over those three days needed some time to rest. Now as practical as this is to conclude, it is exposing the subtle reality that Nehemiah has come to and that all of us must come to when God gives you a God-sized vision and that is you cannot do it alone. As a matter of fact, taking a note from one of my mentors, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III, if you can accomplish it by yourself, it isn't a God-sized vision, it's just a good idea. Because whenever God gives you a vision, it will take more than what you have and take more than who you are. And this is why Nehemiah has already requested resources from the Persian king in the rebuilding of the wall and why in the ensuing verses under our consideration, Nehemiah will issue a challenge to the people in Jerusalem to share his burden of a God-sized vision to rebuild the damaged and broken down walls of the city of Jerusalem. What you and I have to come to terms with, whether it is in the work we do for God or working the plan God has for our lives, is that we are not intended to do it all by ourselves. God hasn't designed any of us to be islands unto ourselves. God's intention for us is to live in community with others as we accomplish God's will for our lives and God's purposes for the world. This is why at creation, God didn't take long before giving Eve to Adam in marriage. It is why God gave Noah a family that after God wiped out humanity with the flood, he needed some people to start all over again with. It is why God gave Moses, Aaron, and Miriam initially, and why in battle God gave him Aaron and her to hold up his hands. This is why God gave David to Jonathan. And when you fast forward to the New Testament, even though Jesus was fully God while he was in human flesh, he called unto himself 12 disciples. This is why God gave Paul a Barnabas, a Silas, and a Timothy, because God intends for us us to do life together, partner in the work of God together so that we might reign together in God's kingdom. But I must make this disclaimer from my own experiences and observations in life. When you work together with other people, it comes with a high probability that you're going to be disappointed and hurt. And here is why they are just as flawed and broken as you are and in worst case scenario, they have allowed themselves to be used as an emissary of evil. 
But we have to grow to the point where we trust God for discernment as to who to invite into the work. And if by chance you find yourself wounded in the barracks while in the Lord's army, as you ask God to heal you, you must be prepared to extend grace and forgiveness. And if I can take you a step further, you have to treat people with love and wisdom. Sometimes you have to love people as you love yourself. And since you love yourself as you love them, you exercise wisdom not to invite someone into the work who will frustrate it or frustrate themselves. The big idea of this passage is this, that God will connect us with passionate people at the intersection of overwhelming odds and an outstanding opportunity to rebuild the brokenness in our world for his glory. Here's the question, and I believe this text begs of us to ask it. How do you successfully work with others to accomplish a God-sized vision in life? Well, number one, number one, you've got to know you have to start with a committed few. Note in verse 12, when Nehemiah goes into action after his three-day respite, the text records that then I rose in the night, I and a few men with me. And I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. There was no animal with me, but the one which I rode. When Nehemiah begins his work, he doesn't prematurely announce what was on his heart or in the plan. We learn that even in the investigatory stages of his mission, although not public, he still is not moving about as a committee of one, possibly for protection or even for collaboration. Nehemiah, as the text says, takes a few men with him to do the work of inspecting the walls around the city. They go with him around and about the southern walls of the city which were possibly the only portion of the city walls that were somewhat intact. Because when invading armies attacked, they would more than likely attack from the north where Jerusalem was most vulnerable. Verses 13 to 15 share Nehemiah's log of his inspection route. And with this small group, he completes his fact-finding mission privately before he shares it publicly with many. Verse 16, he even records, and the officials didn't know where I had gone or what I was doing, and I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, and the rest who are to do the work. Nehemiah is teaching you and me a valuable lesson, and it is that before you share the vision and plan God has laid on your heart, you have and ought to have the benefit of a committed few who you can prepare and plan with so that you, your plan is not ill-conceived, misinformed, or half-baked. Brothers and sisters, this is a word that many of us need to hear. Preparation always precedes presentation. And the best preparation takes place in private with people with whom you trust to tell you the truth without malice or ill intent. Before we take anything and take on any task, we tell others what we plan to do with our lives and for the kingdom. We must be sure to conduct our due diligence. Make sure you do the research, gather the facts, bounce it off of some people with expertise and whom you trust. And you do this so that you know before we take it public, you will have a good idea of your probability for success. This applies not just for church or your organization or your job, but for your own personal life, you need a personal board of directors who can advise you on critical decisions and on the plans you have in mind. That's what scripture teaches us. It's in Proverbs 11 and verse 14, where it says, where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 15, 22 says, 
Without counsel, plans fail. But with many advisors, they succeed. And Proverbs 24 and 6 says, For by wise guidance, you can wage your war. And in abundance of counselors, there is victory. The point is clear that we all need a small group who will prayerfully ponder the plans and with whom you can process the facts that inform the next steps you can take and the next move you're going to make. But I would caution to be prayerful to discern who it is you let into your inner circle, invite onto your personal board of directors, and most importantly, who you share your dreams and visions with. A good dream shared prematurely may bring about your disappointment or demise when shared with people who do not have the capacity to handle what God is doing in your life. Y'all know I'm preaching. Can I give you a case study, the case study of Genesis 37, where Joseph shared his dreams with his brothers concerning his success and sadly their servitude and his brothers became jealous of him, jealous to the point that they conspired to kill him. But thanks be to God for the intercession of one of his younger, youngest brothers who are around his age who asked that his life would be spared but he still ends up sold out. And it would be years before he would go from enslavement, imprisonment, and eventually end up in the palace, which makes me wonder what would have happened of Joseph's life if he had just a little bit of wisdom and discretion. Nevertheless, we see what is true in Joseph's life can be true in ours, that God will be with you wherever you go, and that God is committed to bringing to pass the plans he has for our lives. The point is that when God gives you a dream and a vision, hold it between the faithful few that you can trust. But here's the second thing we learn from Nehemiah of how we can successfully work with others to accomplish a God-sized vision in life. That after you start with a committed few, you then share it wider with compelling faith. After Nehemiah completes his inspection of the walls, he is finally prepared to share with the wider community there in Jerusalem why God has sent him from being cupbearer to the king of Persia back home to Jerusalem. First, we see in his own words that he acknowledges the facts. Verse 17, he says, in the A portion, you see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. There was no way they could deny what Nehemiah was telling them. They needed to grasp the sobering reality of the condition of the walls of the city, but not only the condition of the walls of the city, but note also their own embarrassment. Nehemiah in extending the challenge to rebuild the wall says that they should do so that we may no longer suffer derision. That word derision is translated in other versions to read shame or disgrace. They felt a sense of embarrassment as a people because they were defenseless and vulnerable without the security of the city's walls. But I want you to note as well that in addition to the acknowledgement of the facts, there is an affirmation of faith. At the beginning of verse 18, Nehemiah says, And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good, and also of the words that he, the king had spoken to me. He shares of his personal experience with God, that God's hand was on him. And he does so to convince them that this is not because he's made this up in his mind, but he has a personal experience when he went to the Persian king and asked for permission to return and rebuild. The Persian king spoke to him, giving him permission to take up this work of rebuilding the walls. Nehemiah compellingly 
articulates to the people in Jerusalem why they should take up this cause of rebuilding the walls and moves them from just languishing on the facts to stepping out on faith to take up the work of rebuilding the walls. This is leadership one-on-one. -on -one. If you're going to lead in the church, you're going to lead in your home or in any organization and move people to work together towards a grander goal and vision, once you have communicated the facts, you call the people to trust God by faith, to walk into what is for us an uncertain future, but in God's eyes, that which is very much certain. It's what Andy Stanley teaches us about moving towards accomplishing vision. You articulate where you are and where you want to go, and then you compellingly communicate why you can't stay where you are, and are because you because you want to, where you want to go is what's best for you. And I dare you to do this for yourself if you want better out of your life. Write down where you are right now in life and where you want to go, and remind yourself why you can't stay the same way that you are. Do it for you family and for your marriage and watch your family and marriage become all of what God destined for it to be when you articulate why we can't stay where we are but the point that we're learning from Nehemiah is that he is inviting others into the work that God is calling them to and in order to do that you have to compellingly challenge others to join into what God is doing in the world and how God invites their participation in accomplishing something bigger than themselves. This is what Jesus does in inviting others into the Christian life. He invites people not only to spend eternity in the Father's house, but he invites us to have life and that more abundantly. He invites the weary to take his yoke upon them and learn of him because his yoke is easy and his burden is like Christ has then given us the responsibility as his followers to share this message as far and wide as we can so that people might put their faith, hope, and trust in Jesus and thereby find a better life of peace that surpasses their own understanding, joy that is unspeakable and full of glory, unmerited favor, and a love that will never give up. But third and finally, I want to submit that if we are to successfully work together, we need to seek workers convinced of their future. In verse 17, Nehemiah says this, Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem. And listen to the response at the end of verse 18. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. Because Nehemiah compellingly communicated God's plan to the people of Jerusalem, they are convinced of God's hand being on the plan. But I do not want us to discount the gravity of their response to Nehemiah's challenge. But please understand that the initial message that Nehemiah receives of the welfare of Jerusalem not only speaks of the condition of the walls, but also the morale of the people. The acceptance of this challenge is no small feat because first of all, the scale of the project. Biblical commentator James Boyce says, even by the most modest estimates, the circumference of the city was one and a half to two and a half miles. Moreover, the destruction was great and the, and, uh, the reason that they, the, the stones that were uh, dissembled were massive. This was a large job to complete for people described as just a remnant. But further, their acceptance of this challenge is monumental because of their prior story. Remember last time I told you that this attempt by Nehemiah was not the first attempt to rebuild the walls? If you go back in history, you know that Nehemiah came to Jerusalem the 20th year of the king Artaxerxes which was the year 445 before the common era. 
The first attempt at rebuilding the walls took place under King Cyrus, which was 90 years earlier. The temple was finished 15 years after that, but the wall still laid in ruins. In the seventh year of Artaxerxes, an attempt to rebuild the walls occurred, but it was opposed, leading to them not only being broken down, but burned with fire. They had been in this condition for 13 years until Nehemiah shows up. So to Suffice it to say, they have every reason not to accept this challenge, but yet they are convinced that this is God's initiative. And as they're led by Nehemiah, they take up the work together and declare we're not going to do this alone together. They take up the work, not allowing what they know of their past to keep them from what they can be in their future. And this is the challenge in our day and time, seemingly for some God's call to work together might not be enough. We oftentimes want to know what's in it for us. And I want to challenge us to know that God God's plan is what's for us. And when we join into this work that God will allow us to live into a future and a hope that is planned for our prosperity that does not intend to harm us. If we're ever to realize what God has for us, we must learn how to do it together. John R. No was a corporate executive from Indianapolis, Indiana. He was an avid mountain climber. He had a desire to climb the Matterhorn on the Swiss-Italian border. He had prepared himself for the climb for months, practicing on other mountains. However, when he got to the place where his climb up the Matterhorn would begin, because of the difficulty he had to first pass the inspection of his hired Swiss guide. The guide took him up the qualifying peak of the Matterhorn called the Rifle Horn. They climbed all day long going up and down that qualifying peak. Finally, and at the end of the day, near evening, the guide stopped the climb. He loosened the rope from Noah's waist and said slowly, well, John, it's going to be difficult for you, but I think we can make it together. That's what I want to tell you, church, that as you begin Again, God didn't attend for you to make it happen all by yourself. God has deputized your brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ to join into the work together. As you begin again, you can leave this moment with the words of Hezekiah Walker and declare to those who are your road dogs, those who are partners with you in life, those whom you're doing life with and tell them, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me and agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I pray for you that if you don't have the blessing and benefit of those to partner together with in life, that God will send into your life those whom God has deemed to walk with you on life's journey. And if by chance you're without a friend, know that we have a friend in Jesus that will stick closer than a brother. And I want to invite you, those of you who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to accept the invitation he extends to spend eternity with him, but to walk each and every day with him in communion and in friendship. 
And the way that you can initiate a relationship with Jesus Christ is by believing that he died for your sins and that he rose from the dead. And if you can confess that with your mouth, you can be saved. I'm going to show you in just a few moments how you can affirm that decision. Secondly, there are those of you who may be watching today who already have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but you're not connected with the church. We would love for you to partner with us and the work that God has called us to at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. We're a church that's committed to leading, learning, living, and loving without limits. We're a movement of wholeness in this broken and fragmented world. If you want to join us on this journey with Jesus Christ, I invite you, my brother, my sister, to make the decision that God is calling you to make. Whether the case is you're coming to Christ for the first time or if you're connecting with our church, you can respond in one of two ways. You can either send an email to connect at the boulevard.org or send a text message. Text the word belong to 901-446-4242. You see it right there on the screen. And if you send an email or send a text message to that number saying belong, immediately you're going to receive a link. As soon as you get that link back, click it, a profile is going to come up and I want you to fill out that profile in entirety and click the button that says submit and immediately our team is going to be in touch with you to help you with the next steps on your journey with Jesus Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you are in life, what's importantly, most important, is that you never walk alone because more than anything, we all walk with Jesus Christ. Come on, send that email, send that text message. Brother Paul is going to minister to us as you make that decision. I pray for you, you pray for me. I love you, I need you to survive I won't harm you with words from my mouth I love you, I need you to survive It is His will that every need be supplied you are important to me and I need you to survive. Well, my brothers and my sisters, as we come to the close of this worship experience, we give God praise for the decisions that have been made for Jesus Christ. Please log on uh, to uh, Children's Church, to our middle school ministry and our high school ministry at 12 noon. Make sure your children are connected and then as well connect with us at 12 noon on Wednesdays for the message in the middle. We look forward to continuing in worship next Sunday at 10 30 a.m. One more time if you know somebody who needs to hear this message I want you to input tag them in the comment section there on Facebook. Uh, we want them to get the word that God has for them. Let's receive this blessing as we come to the close of this time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace from this time forth, even forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> The things that we're facing, especially in 2021. Everywhere I go, except for in my home, mm -hmm. I'm behind enemy lines. Man, I think that <laughs> I'm always looked at as the enemy. That's one thing, you know, I had to navigate for over 20 years of my life. What you are here to see today is a collection of men, of black men, of Christian black men that are deeply embedded into our community. You're not the only one that's, you know, dealing with those type of issues, those type of problems. Have yourself surrounded with a group of men mm -hmm. that you can actually talk to. Yeah. We've been taught this hierarchy that says God, family, work, all that. And I think that puts family even in competition with God. And that's a battle nobody can ever win. They're talking through 
those things that affect us that we only talk about with each other. Barbershops are like the sanctuary for black men. Who is the best basketball player of all time? Look at we your shoes. Agree. <laughs> yeah, we can all agree. <laughs> Ain't no debate. It's the place where we can be us. It's the place where we can say things that we may not say to our wives. We've got a great group of young men here, and we want to give you guys a great insight. Just talk among men. Welcome to the Boulevard Shop. Tune in for this month's Message in the Middle as we flash back to some of our favorite messages. Join Pastor Turner every Wednesday this month at 12 noon. Spread the word and tune in on Facebook Live, YouTube, and IGTV to be blessed by these flashback moments. Attention Boulevard youth and parents, the Nexus and Evolve Ministries are having an event for young people 12 through 17 and you do not want to miss it. Join us Saturday, August 28th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on the South Wind Campus Lawn. There will be tons of activities for the youth, including music, food, games, and a raffle. This is also a great opportunity for youth and their parents to meet our staff and volunteers. Click the link in your weekly e-news to register. We look forward to seeing you there. Tune in on Sundays for our virtual worship experience emanating from our Midtown Sanctuary. The Boulevard is the place to be for soul-stirring worship and a timely word from God. We're on Facebook and YouTube at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. Services will be rebroadcast at 6 p.m. August is National Immunization Awareness Month. This annual observance highlights the importance of getting recommended vaccines throughout your life. This month's health tip is focused on the importance of immunizations. You are encouraged to talk to your doctor, nurse, or other healthcare professionals to ensure that you, your child, and family are up to date on recommended vaccines. Also, Boulevard family, with the recent spike in COVID-19 Delta variant cases, now is a great time to do your research and consider your options for the vaccine. Currently, there is a COVID-19 vaccination campaign underway in the United States. The goal is for 70% of all adults in the U.S. to receive at least one COVID-19 vaccine shot, along with steps to vaccinate teenagers and more inaccessible populations. Let's make sure we are wearing our mask and practicing social distancing. Don't forget, ask your doctor if you have any questions about any immunizations. Calling all Boulevard couples, we want to celebrate you. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, let us know by submitting your name, anniversary, and the amount of years you're celebrating on our website at theboulevard.org backslash anniversaries. We'll honor you during our online worship experience on the fourth Sunday of each month. Calling our kids kindergarten through fifth grade. Disciple Town is where you want to be. Sunday virtual worship begins at 12 noon. Click the link in E! News to join us as we learn about Christ in the Bible. And get ready to explore. Join Miss Monica for Disciple Town Discovery, a place to try new things. We're learning more about God and ourselves through movement, the arts and cooking. Look out for more information via e-news and at theboulevard.org. Middle schoolers, there's a new place for you to grow. Join Miss Ty each Sunday at 12 noon on Zoom for Evolve, a place to learn and grow. Check e-news for the link to and email Miss Ty for more information. High schoolers, the Nexus Pod Place of Discipleship is on IG Live every Sunday at noon. If you're a middle, high school, or college age student, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Nexus Boulevard Youth so you don't miss a thing. If you're ages 18 to 25, Cram Ministry is for you. Cram, change requires alternative measures. It's a Boulevard's college age ministry that seeks to assist post-secondary students in making a healthy transition into young adulthood. Don't miss our Zoom sessions every Friday night at 6 p.m. 
email Minister Chris Watson for more information at watson.christopher at theboulevard.org. The Boulevard continues to be a blessing to others, whether it's feeding the hungry, showing love to essential workers, or any of a number of community efforts. We couldn't do it without your generosity. Your giving makes the difference. There are multiple ways to give. Text Boulevard Midtown to 77977. You can cash app at dollar sign Mississippi Boulevard. We're also on PayPal or you can give by mail. Remember to use hashtag Boulevard Connect to share your watch party, virtual life group, or social media posts about how much you enjoyed our most recent service. To make sure you never miss what's happening at the Boulevard, Follow us on social media and sign up for our weekly e-news by emailing info at theboulevard.org.